Ghana seems to be in bed with the IMF. We've gone there so many times that we can't even um, count it. And currently, we are the IMF. The team is here. They are having discussions. But the money, or whatever support is supposed to be coming, has not come yet. And it's left many wondering, when is the IMF really going to support us? Because we are told that that is going to be the final solution. This despite what the government has said in the past months and years. On Face to Face today, I'm going to engage someone who has worked both at the IMF and at the Ministry of Finance to understand what are the things that will go on around these times and are we going to get a final solution. My name is Umaru Sandamadu and you're welcome to Face to Face on City TV. The Honorable Imano Set Tekpe has been Deputy Minister of Finance, has been Minister of Finance. And uh, right now he's, you can say, can I say Shadow Finance Minister? I mean, finance no, minister we, in opposition. Well, we don't have a parliamentary <laughs> system, so... <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. You're, you're looking at things from afar. Do, do, you, do you envy uh, your success at all? That if you were the one around, all these stress on his head, people asking for him to go, the challenges with the economy, I'm sure you are like, oh, I'm happy I've retired, at least temporarily. Well, you seem to forget that, you know, I was going through similar, uh, you know, things. Um, I, I think it's a pressure job because uh, it, it deals with the economy as a whole. Um, there are, I wouldn't say it's all negative, they are positive. You know, when you're able to do things, when you're able to resolve major problems, like uh, in my case, single spine, you know, getting, you know, doom so and uh, some control, you know, uh, before we just before we left office, so it has its positive side, has its experiences, unique. Uh, yes, but it's also a pressure job. So when you when you solve <coughs> it, then you feel relief and like, oh, I have money to fix this problem. I think I always say that it's pretty much like the job is pretty much or governance is pretty much like a household. If the child is sick, you know, once they stop the cough or something, then you have some relief as a parent, right? Especially when they are very young, toddlers, and, and uh, if you have a business, and, uh, you know, let's use your example, the adverse are not coming, you begin to scratch your head and wonder, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on? Are the competitors, you know, doing better than us and all that? Yeah, so you put one or two calls and things, and when you see the numbers and they're improving, of course, you know, as a businessman, you can pay your loans, you can pay, so it's quite similar. Mm. Uh, so, sounds so simple. <coughs> Simplify for us this whole IMF concept. W what is the idea? Why did the countries of the world decide to set up a fund somewhere? Which fund, if you visit, you are regarded as not doing well? So what's the purpose of a fund that you cannot go to when you are part of it? Well, let me come home. Um, there is expression, especially those who have done economics, even low level. You know, there is a concept of a central being the central bank being the lender of what, last resort. Which means that when the financial system is under stress, you know, the and banks are having pressure, you know, on them, you know, through the reserve and other systems which is established by the central bank, they can go to the central bank, you know, to get some money, you know, quick, you know, injection and then, you know, repay. It's the same relationship that developing countries in particular, you know, have with, you know, the, the IMF. The IMF is a lender of last resort. But frankly, it applies to every member country of the IMF. So if, let me give you one example. Uh, during COVID, when there was a stress, and the IMF appreciation, of uh, its, of its uh, capital base, what you call the SDR, you remember when it was distributed? Mm -hmm. If you look at the list, every single country got one, including the United States. As long as you have, it's like dividends, giving out dividends. If you have a thousand cities, you get more. If you have hundred cities, you get Is it tenth. that countries contribute? Yes. Look, so, so Ghana has something we contribute to? Exactly, every, yes. Every That's year. That's what we refer to as our quota. No, not every year. What you you invest, and, and because you have an investment in the fund, it's a bank, you know, a contribution, that's the way it's called. And so, so it means that 
the capital base, and that also determines the voting powers on the. Okay. You know, yes. Yeah. So. So how much you contribute determines how much power you have. Yes. At the so fund. So if you take the balance, yes. So every member state. So as it appreciates, and when the fund gives out, you know, um, loans, for example, it earns, you know, some interest and it invests. So that is what it redistributes. So during COVID, that's what was distributed. That's so I'm explaining the one billion. Mm -hmm. That's the source. If we are in a program and we are going to take a loan, you know, from the fund, those are where the fund, similar to the World Bank, you know, that's how they operate. That's why they call them Bretton Woods institutions. They came around the same time. One is focused heavily on the real sector, the World Bank. One is a monetary institution. And that's why central banks, they tend to do more with central banks. So yeah. IMF is like an investment bank for the countries of the world. So why is it a problem then when we go there? Because it's not a problem if I go to my bank, right? If I invested and I believe it has matured, I'm going for it. It's simple, but it doesn't sound as simple when IMF comes to town or when we go to IMF. It's not that simple. Even for us, it's not that simple. If you are running your business efficiently, it's simple, right? Just go and borrow and not pay. You see the, the court orders coming and your assets will no longer be yours. So even, even that analogy you use, it's not simple. But is it right? always about monetary support, monetary support? Because there was something about policy credibility. Which one does IMF really do for us? Because but, the money they give us, because I'm hearing that currently is $3 billion. That's nothing. It's a drop in an ocean, cons considering how much we need. No, given the size of our economy, how much we need, also tells you the depth to which we have gone. Remember that of the 17 programs you mentioned, you know, um, the highest was the $915 million. Less than a billion. Five. Yes, less than a million, which we did, you know, under the ECF. Remember, we left office in 2016. So actually part of that money accrued to, you know, the uh, current government because they continue the program. Now the difference between rapid disbursement, that's why it's called RCF, Rapid Credit Facility. It's a credit facility is that there's crisis, you know, and whilst your traditional donors, the big economies, are also faced with similar crises like COVID. They are unable to come quickly to, to your support, right? And even if they can come to your support, it gets to a point where they would want you to go under the discipline, you know, of, of a bank. It's one thing, you know, borrowing from your uncle, and then we are relatives, and uh, unless you are used to throwing blows in the house, you know, sometimes they shrug and, you know, they they just, you know, leave you. Mm -hmm. But you can't go to the bank and collect the same money for school fees and behave the same way, right? So, I mean, that's a kind of, you know, simplified analogy. In so what the, sorry, where the policy credibility comes in is that the, the IMF has two sides, right? The IMF is a technical institution. The IMF has fiscal aspects. The IMF has... And the fiscal, they have expenditure experts, they have revenue experts, some of them who have worked in countries before, before they join. So they have that, those are the technical, they provide the technical assistance. So if you have a problem with GRE, you go to the fiscal affairs department, you know, and they have all these experts, some of whom have become, in fact, the current head was a minister in Portugal. <laughs> so he knows, yes. Um, but there are those who also join, you know, just from school, regular and intense, and then internship and they continue. So they do have that expertise. Then there is the uh, area departments, Africa departments, you know, and they are the ones who usually come to do the Article 4, you know, which we can explain later, mm -hmm. you know, to see the health of the economy. Article 4 means that you signed, in signing the articles of association of the fund, you've signed to Article 4, which says that you open your books. So every this now and then for, every for, now and then. for so auditing of a precisely. source. Precisely. So this impression that, you know, I can do what I like when I'm not in a program is deceptive. Because so you are perpet perpetually under the watch, the hawkish watch of the, of the program. Absolutely. Under the Article 4 intervention. Absolutely. Which and is very frequent. Back, 
Yeah, if you come back to the, to, to the bank analogy that we mm. in the household, if you go and borrow and you say you want to do, use the money for construction. They'll right? come and remember check if that's the, what you're doing. Precisely, the project money. And sometimes remember, the banks for that purpose would employ an architect. <laughs> Not who who understands remember. that. Precisely, the big banks and the rest. Using yes. the local <laughs> bank analogy, it is normal for a bank to come begging you to come and take a loan. Now, because, of course, that's how they thrive as a business. Is the IMF not deliberately putting hurdles in our way to entice us to come for support so that we are perpetually tied to them? Is there, because there could be a conspiracy theory like that. Well, remember... That if we go broke, we'll come to them. So they should no. make sure we are broke. No. Um, you're talking about the world order. Yes. Right? The IMF is associated with the Western world order, you know, so, but some of those things come from, say, the fall in commodity prices. At the moment, uh, that's one. Let me give you a second example. At the moment, the US, UK, EU countries are increasing interest rates. The prediction is, in, let me just give two of them, is that it will raise the cost of borrowing. Because when you go, because the U.S. Treasury bill 10-year rate, for example, determines a lot of the market rate, right? Just like our prime, you know, rates, you know, or the policy rate, as we call it here, determines the rate at which banks here give money. So the same way, if you, um, uh, if the major economies, you know, that have give the funds to the capital markets, that's the stock exchanges, the equity funds, and the rest. As they raise interest rates, you know, we go to borrow from those places. So if they increase interest rates in those countries, it increases the global interest rate, right? It affects you. So it means that the rate at which we are borrowing, you know, from the markets will suddenly go up. We faced that situation in 2015 when crude oil prices dropped Saudi Arabia and others who contribute, mm -hmm. you know, to, the, to, to those resources were taking money out. So money became short. Interest rates went up. And so we did 10.2. It was going to be even 12% compared to, say, 8.5 or 9% that we had been doing. So you are putting the fund in that context. Mm -hmm. Also, the second prediction is that the advanced countries might go into a recession. I believe that you've been listening to the UK yeah. prediction mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. policy consequences and the rest. If they go into recession, it means that the, the recession means jobs will be lost. It means around the dinner table to come home, less chocolate. You know, so it trickle US. down. So it trickles down, precisely, to us. Because then all of a sudden demand, you know, for our cocoa goes down, price you know, goes down because the supply, you know, cannot be pulled back immediately. You are supplying Cote d'Ivoire, supplying. Now China is also putting it. The demand you know, will the be market. low. Demand, yes, will be low there, and therefore, you know, demand and supply. Supply suddenly exceeds demand, so what? Prices, you know, go down. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you know, that's a contagion effect. So we also begin to suffer. We lose forex. We lose all those who are working with the cocoa industry, tax revenue, and all, we lose all of those things. Now, I'm pointing to the cause of the problem. Yes. You see, it's not that. And not, and not a di not not that diabolical. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not that. Now, what is the difference between Ghana, right? Let me pick three countries. What's the difference between Ghana? We are fond of Korea. So mm -hmm. Korea and the United States. So I've picked a middle income country, once upon a time we were a lower middle lower. income. We were in between, we still lower developing, mm -hmm. we are between developing and mm -hmm. lower, and we are supposed to advance. Mm -hmm. Korea, we all say that, if we were in the 60s, they would be like Ghana, right? Mm -hmm. Don't we say that all the time? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what are I saying? The fund and the bank, if you remember, they came after the world wars. And I mean, that's why they have the Bretton Woods. The meetings in Bretton Woods, which is a town mm -hmm. in the US, you can go visit it. The, the, that's where the meetings were held, and they fashioned out these two institutions to help the rebuilding after the war, which is similar to setting up something to rebuild, say, Ukraine. That's fresh in our minds. So that's how they came.
to, so, to salvage the world economy. So most of the most of so the name for the World Bank is the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, LBRD. That's where it comes from. But because they are global, they okay. So between the world wars and when we got independence and all that, we were on the you know cocktails or cocktails of UK and colonial and other. But once you become in, uh, members, so you see Ghana became a member in 1957. Right. Okay. So the advanced countries, particularly Germany, together with you know the resources that were given by the US and the rest, you know, built quickly and they became less dependent on the World Bank and the IMF. They became the contributors. Major the, contributors. Major contributors. Right. Then a group of countries that once excuse me, once upon a time were also developing. Take the Asian tigers, take the Eastern European countries that just acceded to the EU mm -hmm. also emerged. Some Latin American countries, they emerged, you know, so you have the acronym China, Brazil, India, and, and the what? The BRICS, that's the BRIC countries, yeah. which South Africa is one. And then you have the emerging countries from Middle East, you know, and then you have the Asian tigers. So, so, the that, so there are different levels of exactly. control, so, in, or control, not control, but contributions to the IMF. Contribution, but also different levels of dependence. Ben, okay, and benefits. And yes, because once you build a strong economy... You don't need them that much. Yeah, you need them. Let's, you, you, but you don't you, need you, bailouts. You, exactly, that's why they take standby mm -hmm. arrangements. Okay. We talk about standby, okay. if you first. Okay. So uh, the fund is on standby. If you have a problem, you can come. The best example during the global financial crisis, you had it: Portugal, yeah. Ireland, you know, Greece, Spain. Well, Did they go back to the fund for COVID? No, no they learned their lessons because for them it was like when we declared hippie, you know, who were suddenly so they learned bankruptcy. fixed their mess and moved on. Yes, you can say for them they've learned their lesson twice, you know, and that choice. So they fixed their economy and whatever. I'm only saying this to illustrate the fact that you see the essence of homegrown policies. So if you, you know, get the policies and you strengthen the way you do things yourself. So in our case, it was opportune when we did the rebasing, right, and the services sector became the largest and whatever. Also, and we became middle income also to have discovered oil. And so that's where the thinking comes from, that let's not use oil the way we use gold, the way we use cocoa. So is that why we keep going, but the other members don't go to IMF? And that's why they give money for us to go and take. Essentially, so... Basically, because they're on the board. So they determine, ultimately, the staff papers and things that will be sent, they are the ones on the board. So <coughs> I'm still on the conspiracy side. So isn't the global imbalance, some people can trace it to colonialism. Or you think that it is high time oh, we, no, took responsibility, we took responsibility for our no, 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 management, not, economic no, management. No, 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 no. I'm not. That's why Should I said... Should we be treated on the same pedestal as those who had, you know, a, a head start? No, 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 no. And no, I don't think any... And I'm not inferring. At all. You remember I said mm -hmm. it's a global order when yes. we started. Yes. I wanted to look at the global order. Mm -hmm. Has the fund, the bank become, you know, part of that global order? That's the thinking of many that some of them people think. Yeah. People were one thing thought, let's talk about schools of thought, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. they are nothing more than an extension to keep suppressing mm -hmm. it. But what I'm trying to do here in that conversation, mm -hmm. you know, in this conversation, is to say that <coughs> yes, they may be that way, right? But is there a possibility for you to also be on your feet and at least go less often? There's so evidence that, that people go. have done that, so you can also do oh, that. Oh, I mentioned them. The Asian, the so, Asian target. Mm -hmm. Remember the Latin America yeah. crisis? You yeah. know, remember Asia used to... The, you remember, it's not the whole of Asia, but the targets. So there's no invisible hand that whips you back there every now and then. Which invisible hand is possibly operating in the dark? You can blame the world economy if you want. But, but that's but what the there question, is to it. Well, yes, but the question you have to ask... You know, I, let, let me repeat. I'm, I don't want to downplay that, right? But I'm saying that we should also try as much as possible. 
another domestic analogy, right? Um, many of us, including myself, right? My mother, single mother, was trading in Somalia market, <laughs> right? Is it feasible that she may have gone for loans here and there? You see people coming, she goes out, comes. Today, I probably understand that, hey, it took quite an effort, you know, for this woman, the sacrifice. Is that why we lack our parents when you come to appreciate the sacrifice that they make, you know, for you to go to school, right? And there are many people who will tell that, that kind of story, right? So if somebody did not break the chain with sacrifice, sometimes with insults, right? Go to borrow <laughs> and uh, something goes wrong, maybe the market is not right, you can't pay, you know, you know that, right? But another lesson, uh, if your business is doing well, right, and you go and borrow from your neighbor, as I keep saying, and you don't pay, term one, term two, trust that term three, you can't go to you the same place. Well. This is face yeah. to face on City TV. My name is Omar Sandam, and my guest is Setepe. He is being <coughs> at the IMF as someone who works with the IMF, and he's also been someone who led us to the IMF to ask that they should come and support us. So when we come back, I'm going to ask him to walk us through the road to IMF, which road is being walked now by his successor, Ken Oforiata, and what pitfalls there are that should be avoided, and what he thinks we should be approaching the IMF with. Please stay with us. You're welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. My name is Omar Sandar. We are discussing the IMF. Seth Tepe has taken us to IMF before. He has worked at IMF. So um, walk us through the road to the IMF. The president made a phone call, I believe. I don't know whether it's a symbolic thing or it actually has to happen. Because the announcement came that the president had directed the Minister of Finance to begin conversation with IMF. You have been there before. How do these things work? And it, has, how, it has to happen. So the president has to make the call. The, the fund. You remember I spoke about the technical side. Mm -hmm. For example, let me give you a specific example, quick one. Mm -hmm. um, you remember we created GRA, mm -hmm. which was a follow-up to NRS, RGB, and IRS. then we wanted to move to... Then we had IRS and we had VAT service. We wanted to integrate, as many countries did. Right? So we approached... We, we had the plan, you know, in mind. Of course, there was a... You're tax, referring to, tax you're referring to the mid-90s, early 90s, mid-90s. No, that's even before then. The mid-90s, the early, late 80s to the 90s was when we removed IRS, you know, uh, sorry, we removed the Central Revenue Department and the Central Customs and the Customs Department from the civil service, made them semi-autonomous. Okay. And then they became IRS and SEPs. Okay. And then later we had a VAT service. Okay. Okay, so they were they became quasi public sector institutions or public sector institutions, quasi civil service. Mm -hmm. Then fast forward two thousand and nine, they were they were they had a REGD, Revenue Justice Governing Board, between them and the Ministry of Finance. We changed that in two thousand nine to GRA, current GRA. And then we merged IRS and the VAT service to become the domestic tax division, no longer an independent agency. The so SEPs, no became, mm -hmm. SEPs became customs division. And then all the administration became one under the GRA. You know, yes, under the GRA. Okay. Now, and then at the same time, you remember also that we, we passed about almost all the laws were revised completely, the Banking Act and everything. One of the things which I want to highlight is that much of that assistance for the thinking. And the experience, remember the fund works in so many places. And the experience, what went wrong, what did not go wrong, just like our VAT, you know, the fund was, there's a technical department provider. That's why you have the Regional Technical Assistance Center. It's the fund began to locate offices. So we have several in Africa. One is in Accra, one is in Tanzania. You know, for Africa, there's a... So they come around and give us technical guidance. Significant technical guidance, together with the World Bank. Right. Is that also... Do we count that as part of the 17, or that's different? Does the 17 that we count include only when there was financial support? No, okay, so... Okay, so let's move now. When the, the impression we have about the fund is not what I've mentioned. Okay. It is... <laughs> The guy with the stick, yes. you know, who comes in and 
puts you back in order. When we are indisciplined. Um, sometimes when we have difficulties. Mm -hmm. Because it, it could be that it's no fault of yours. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but the indiscipline may, may come, let's use fiscal discipline, not in the, yes. you know, pre, yes. uh, pre what's the word, you know, terms. Yeah. But if you did not or stopped building a buffer for hard times, stabilization fund, right, you go to the fund. Mm -hmm. If you do not have a mechanism, you know, for borrowing, for paying down your debt, when you continue to borrow, it will escalate. You find yourself in the, in the fund. So it means strengthening our policies from our experience. So you see where the, how countries emerge and they, it takes time. And you need to sustain these policies. You don't need to, it's no stopgap, right? You need to sustain it. So if you don't have those mechanisms, and even for those who have it, it comes a time like the global financial crisis and others, when some of the countries that are middle income and strong tend to go to the fund. Some of them don't go to the fund anymore, but they may go to say the Asian Development Bank, which is stronger. We have the African Development Bank, for the example, Asian banks of China as well. Is, is that, mm -hmm. Well, those are, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or rather the Asian Development Bank, of which, you know, China is, you know. So, um, so when you go, and let's see how the two, the two work, the two sides of the fund work. When you come, as they are here now, our revenue has been stagnant. We've been discussing it, right? It's not been, mm -hmm. you know, improving. Mm -hmm. Those who come and diagnose the problem will then say, as part of the program, you can go to the Revenue Administration Division of the IMF, where I used to work, and IFAD. If Bank of Ghana has issues with its structure because it's giving so much money, you know, and they want to, re to governments to finance the budgets, you know, and all that, and it's becoming weak, the capital, mark, uh, they have the capital and monetary capital markets division, so I forget it you know, of the fund, they can then come in, they have the expertise, right? So the point I was making So it's is not a wholesale, <clears throat> when we say IMF, it's not just like one wholesale visitation. It's not one agenda. So Let's there could be different way. blocks that can be attended to based and on our challenges. Come. The statistics department, for example, would come. The statistics department, in fact, there is the chairman of, sorry to be personal, but not sorry to be proud, mm -hmm. the chairman of the Sanchez board mm -hmm. used to be in the statistics, you know, department of the fund, well known. Um, the, there's one other, you know, of the Chiquita brothers who had worked, you know, done significant work. Um, and you have the World Bank, you have, you know, Mr. Yawan Su and others who may have heard the name, Minister of Finance. They were working, you know, or if you asset, you know, you know, a KY Mark, mm -hmm. household name, he was at the World Bank. So we've had this type of. You know, so that's what I mean by you have every country has somebody in the World Bank or the IMF. So this kind so of this is, mm -hmm. you know, then once you go into a program, but even before you go into a program, because as a member of the fund, you can say, I have a problem with revenue generation. Can you come and help on your own? They will come and offer advice. I have a problem with expenditure management, right? You know, and so when we're putting up the structures, you know, for the uh, sinking fund and all those. The World Bank gave a contribution. The IMF gave a contribution. Because after all, that is what, as a nation, we want to do. It didn't come as a condition for anything that we have to do. But the conditions come when you go to the fund to borrow, to correct a situation that is getting out of hand. Which one have we gone to do now? Right now, we are going for money. So right now, we are asking them that we need... Is that what we call um, debt sustainability? Is that what it's called? No, the, the debt sustainability is identifying. Okay, I see where you're coming from. Um, from the release that was, that was made. Remember, we lacked market access, mm -hmm. right? So we're we unable out. to go blocked out because of the ratings and others. So the major problem facing us now, right? You know, these are firefighters. The fund is like a firefighter. The major problem coming now, if you are fire in a house and the fire service comes, they go straight to the kitchen 
where the fire starts to dry. The root. They don't start the root, right? So the, it may not be the effect or the combination of the problem we have is that we have a serious debt you know, crisis. And so they bring in their technical experts together with the area department and they analyze your debt situation. That analysis is the debt sustainability analysis. How sustainable is your debt? Right? We all know it's no, it's no longer sustainable. So then they come in, put in their model, right, various parameters, and then one, diagnose the problem, two, propose solutions to you. One solution, uh, let's take the most obvious ones, which we put, is one, you have to raise revenue. They give you, then the technical people come, they go, they will come and stay all the time with GRA, look at the problems, you got to remember there are those who have worked. But, but, but you just yes. tell them that you've been trying to raise revenue through e-levy and it didn't work. What can they really do? Do they have a magic wand that they'll raising at, revenue? No, they will look at your whole tax structure and see what is, what is the problem. Why did it not work? So it's not consumption they look at. They look at revenue genera gen generation because... The entire revenue. The entire from customs to everything. So when they can, they are not going to look at only e-levy. They are going to look at the other levies. Are they part of the constraint? You so know, they will ask you to what? Raise it? No, they will propose, you know, solutions, you know, to, you, to, um, to resolve it. For example, one, one solution which, you know, we did under Professor Mills, as I was saying, was to merge the VAT service and the internal revenue service. They offered assistance. So we that dupli duplicity was addressed? Exactly. Because... IRS is going after the same invoice as the VAT service. So why don't you get one team to go and do, you know, so that you give the businessman a break? That was an IMF why advice. You... Or an, an IMF, IMF uh, led, you guidance. Know, the, yes, provide guidance. But IMF actually initiated some of those moves. Okay. Right from the Washington consensus days, when okay. they became, you know, yeah. Okay. So they, they propose solutions like that. So uh, what is, sorry, second one, mm -hmm. what is wrong with the expenditure? Say that your expenditure is always ahead. You can raise revenue, right? So they look at the components of the expenditure and they realize which one is taking the largest amount. Interest, compensation, right? Free SHS as a flagship. So they look at it and then they say, look, you cannot sustain this. Or we ourselves know that we cannot sustain it, right? The street where we are now, our academics, everybody. So then they come in, not just analyze, but they propose solutions based on the experiences of other countries. But you cannot be said not to. You, okay, if you cannot sustain, um, what was the word? Um, interest payments. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to pay. There's everything you can do about it. Yes, you have to pay. But so even if you can't sustain it, you have to pay it. If you can't pay compensation, you can't sustain it, you still have to pay. You can't say, we're not going but to pay the, workers. Yeah, but what's the path to getting out of it? So let's take, let's take practical examples. Um, so single spine. The pilots seem perfect. But on implementation, hey, we saw that there was something wrong. Right? And then the areas just keep mounting. You know, why? Because the assumption was that you know, those who earn high income, you know, would somehow be marking time, whilst those who do equal jobs and are not paid well will be brought up. It just happens that the number of people who came who up, them, who came, precisely, <laughs> became, <laughs> more. became too high. It became too high. Or the size became too exactly. huge. So what was the solution? In that case, we had a solution which we tabled when we did a fund program, which is to negotiate with labor and say we'll pay this arrears over three years because we had been issuing debt, you know, to pay it. It's like the energy sector debt to be paying it, right? Take a and loan uh, to pay salaries. Exactly. You know, so we said, no, we have to pay this from our own resources. But how can you do that? It's, possible, it's clear that if you are going to pay everything at once, it will have to be a loan. So we negotiated, we said, look at the debt, it's going up. We've just become hippie and it's going up again. So can we spread this over three years, including those who are not being migrated, we move them. So you smoothen it, right? So you smooth it, and then it becomes feasible to pay from tax, not from loan, annually. The, the, so that's a sort of solution, okay. problem resolution, you okay. know, that the fund brings to the But table. in terms of <laughs> compensation, which is paid monthly, 
That one you can't help it. For instance, they just negotiated successfully. No, we did not negotiate. No, no, no. I'm saying that recently, organized labor negotiated and succeeded to get some extra 15% as uh, COLA, cost of living allowance. All of that is adding up to the burden that is already there. So, you can't scrap it off once you've introduced it, can you? So let's look at what is going on now with hindsight, single spine. Mm -hmm. So let's say we mark time now, right? Let's say we stop the clock now. Mm -hmm. How, since the COLA came into effect, assuming I think it starts from January, right? Mm -hmm. Or even it starts from when it was negotiated. negotiated. If you are unable to pay because of pressure, it means you have accumulated, let's say, five months or what? So debt carried mm -hmm. forward? No, I'm, 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 I'm segmenting the issue. So yeah. you have the debt element. It was due, it wasn't paid. That's it one. has to be paid, that's one. There is a current liability, which is your old salary plus COLA. So the scenario goes like this. We will pay from next month the COLA plus the salary, right? We'll pay that regularly, right? So you are not deprived of cost of living. It's in the high wake of inflation. But we would lump the arrears and spread it because we don't have the means of borrowing you know, to pay you now. But spread so it with, spread interest that, on, with interest or not? Well, that's point of negotiation, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. So that's, you have raised a point and issue for negotiation. So you're just you pushing your burden into the future. You would pay eventually, but it, you, are free, <clears throat> you are freeing yourself a bit. You free yourself a bit. But you see, you use a, a balance which is often, you know, an expression that's you know, throw it into the future. If you throw it into the future without a plan, you are going to do... Remember you did a cola. We did a cola also. Yes. But then the wage increases will come under the law annually. It's you know, for as long as there's inflation. So it means that you must manage, you know, your fiscal resources effectively so you don't get into that situation. The IMF team in Ghana <laughs> now is doing what they call debt sustainability an analysis, um, DSA. What is that? Okay, so DSA, DSA does not take a current view, short-term view. For example, if I tell you we are used to it, so let me start from there. Our debt, sorry, our debt ratio, which is debt over GDP, mm -hmm. debt over output, right, rose from 57 to uh, currently 80, some say 85, right? Okay, what gave rise to that? Okay, borrowing, expenditure in excess of, you know, what? Revenue. Revenue. Okay, what's the way forward? What the fund is doing is to say, one, they have the baseline static position. If you were to continue this, right, and they will, so they'll plug in the assumptions. If you increase wages next year, the following year, the following year, what is the, you know, the cost over a period of, say, 10 years, assuming nothing happens to current situation. If you kept your, your flagship, you know, programs, and when I say flagship, I'm not... Again, sometimes these things become political. But remember, we had the e-schools. You are also. looking at the economy side of things, the cost yes. of, of, yes. of running it. Just at the e-schools, remember? Mm -hmm. yes. when we the e-blocks. E mm -hmm. We said we couldn't you know, do everything. 200 of yeah, them. Exactly. We couldn't do 200. We could do just 120 or something. We ended up saying we will finish you know, 50 something. So you can say, then. okay, free SHS, we are going to take away boarding. Or we are going to take away feeding. Or something. But you, we can't take everything. You are identifying what should come from the government side when the negotiation is done. That's what you just done. Right? Well, you have I'm, a problem. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> no, I'm telling mm -hmm, you precisely. Mm -hmm. that, that is, that's the way it goes. Because you are the Minister for Finance now. Mm -hmm. And have, let's say that I've been telling you now, we are in negotiations, mm -hmm, discussions, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give you money, right? Or let's say I'm your bank manager. And I'll tell right? you what and I'm willing to sacrifice. Precisely. Mm -hmm. What do you think should be sacrificed now? We know that we've been discussing that. We you, know, we know. That's why, okay, let's come to debt. That's why debt is a yes. major issue. Because right now, we can't go to the market, we can't borrow. So they will do the debt sustainability analysis, and it is unsustainable. We know it. Because the one that, which was done in 2021, said we were already in debt distress. 
There was so prediction. Prediction. And if we, you know, there was. We were there already. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the elements. And then, you know, we've added, you know, to it. It has become, our ratings have gone down further. So the analysis will be done. If you don't change, this is where you are going to land. Maybe back to hippie. Uh, so so no they will tell program. you plain plain <clears throat> that this is your current situation. We've done the debt sustainability. And your debt we already know is not sustainable. But this in the next two years or in the next five years, this is the, the, the way you are headed. That's what you say to you, you frankly. Me, maybe because I work in the fund. But let me tell you one thing. Um, at the fund, I wasn't you know, involved in that aspect because I had this expertise. When I became a deputy, I sat with the staff to understand what the sustainability analysis. I had an idea. I read about it and everything. But I sat through the sessions to understand what is it that's really involved. So they will take your, your, you have foreign, you have a debt denominated in foreign mm -hmm. currency, mm -hmm. right? So, so they will take what is your cocoa likely to bring over a period of 10 years? What is your gold likely to bring? What is your, and then they will do the two scenarios together. Remember, that's why the, it's a trend. They mm -hmm. look at you know, high price, mid price, and all that. They will do all those assumptions. Then they will take how much GRA is bringing. They will take how much if you don't change. That's when the reforms come in. We think that you need, so the government will come. The people from Ministry of Agri, they'll be there. And they'll say, oh, in the last two years, because we had difficulties, we couldn't spray the cocoa farms very well. But if we get a relief, then we are going to start the spring program. We are going to start the subsidy program. We are going to do all of those things. So, so this DSA that is happening, What's the next stage before the money comes? Because for many, it's the money that has to come. After DSA, then what? They'll come and they'll go no, after, and come. No, wait a minute. No. They are not here for only DSA. They've only flagged to say that the DSA is your most critical issue. So they but will remember, deal with that. Yes, but remember, they will go on. Why? Because, as I just said, what is debt? Debt is your revenue. Being lower than what? Your expenditure. Your expenditure. Just like a household. So which gives you, sorry, which gives you the deficit, right? Which is And huge. you borrow to finance the deficit, right? So that is what is the problem. So they've seen that your situation is unsustainable. That's what the debt sustainability, they've done it before. Has it worsened? Will it worsen if you continue on the path since we did the last one? Then you come up with the proposals, just as you were doing beautifully, right? So remember, so from debt, you go to revenue, you go to expenditure, you go to, and remember I was talking about the real sector, who mm. are the minister for Greek, what will you do with the cocoa? Yeah, yeah. Because the minister for finance is promising that, you know, that, but he's not managing the cocoa okay. sector, okay. right? Let, let me, they let bring me. in, sorry, so they bring in the energy minister, they bring in, and they have the engineers, they have the data, so they bring all the this. Are we going to bring PDS back? Is it going to, what is it going to do for us? Those are sort of things. Let me come you. back. This is Face to Face on City TV. Uh, my name is Umaru Sandam, and here with Setekwe, former <coughs> minister of finance. For many, when they hear IMF, it's the conditionalities that come with it. The Mahama government was accused of uh, freezing employment because of IMF. What is the consequence of this program we are going to, and I'm referring to the negative consequence for the ordinary Ghanaian. Please stay with us. You welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. Satekwa is former Minister of Finance is my guest. So you agree that at this stage, IMF is our best bet, right? We, we don't have any option. We have to be there. We said we're not going there. We've been there. So I'm not <laughs> the one saying it. So it's, it's, there's no option. This is the only option available. I said I'm not the one saying it. Didn't you say we're not going? <laughs> so the, Even at the time we said we're not going, when the crisis hit, we went for one billion. Mm -hmm. And then we went for another one billion. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we are going yes. to take three billion, hopefully, put in a suitcase and bring it to Accra. I don't know whether it's going to be rapid or it's going to be staggered. And I don't know if the three billion is set. It depends on your quota. Depends on a number of factors. Remember, you, so you, you said the highest the we've had was less than one billion. Yes. Is there a possibility that they can Under jump? Program, up? Remember, I know better. Yes. If you okay. Take okay. RCF okay. As okay. A program, okay. That was a billion. Yes. So if is it possible that they can jump us to three billion at a goal like that? I don't know. That was, that's, a, that's a determination for the board. Okay. When they bring that money, whether one... Three but remember, billion. sorry, remember that when you are not at the table is the World Bank. So, I remember I mentioned okay, that they are yes, the development yes. wing. Yes, yes. They are yes. a sister institution. So remember the country director has already said that the sun is ready to provide budget support. Mm -hmm. We got a budget support. Mm -hmm. You know, remember the development partners are also in the wings. So all those funds will come to complement. And then remember, you are going to give a signal to the markets that unlike what was said that we were not uh, treating it urgently 
and now it's urgent. So maybe the creditors will, will we'll be willing to talk to, to talk to us. Okay. Yeah. Now, <laughs> if that money or whatever support comes from IMF, that is a gain. Which one is going to be our loss? Is it true that they will ask us to stop employing people? I think our gain is a stronger fiscal system, which we must not make to deteriorate again. Because it is that process that leads to the sacrifice, which we are talking about. The fact that you may have to, you know, uh, curtail, you know, employment. Remember, we started already, NAPCO. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned, <laughs> mm -hmm. I just want to go yeah. through the, yeah. you know, the administration so that, you know, we're, we're taking them off. The why, whatever program has yes. not, you know, taken why? off. Why? Is that, you know, there's another one which was to be there, actually. It's not taking off because the resources are just not there. So, yes. so it's likely that the program would come with some consequences for us. The ordinary um, man who is going to benefit from <clears> the <throat> fund will also lose from the fund. The household again. If you go and if you go and borrow, you see the children at the table. Hey, maybe if if it is, you know, as dar, maybe less meat. Even though we know that it's good for good nutrition, less, you know. So we tighten yeah. the belts. Of course, that's what we should be doing in the first place. And that is why we, for example, sacrifice current use of the oil revenue to, step, to set up a stabilization fund. And when the COVID came, we were able to withdraw 215 million from it. For, 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 we are told that, that is why we sacrifice putting money in the budget to set up a stabilization fund if we are to continue borrowing. At your time, you went to Senji. This government hasn't done any forum like that. Would that take away from what they are going to get from the IMF or what they are going no. to No, I mean, it's an internal arrangement. So if, if the fund, remember the fund is not dictating to government what to do. They may recommend what other countries have done or what was done in the past. But the government, Ghana is sovereign. That's what you must understand. So they, they will wait for you to come with your proposal and they'll tell yes. you if they can help you do it or not. Well, they'll discuss it with you. It's not that way. That's, that's a negotiation. Mm. So they discuss, they discuss, you know, each item which has been identified. And they've identified quite a number in Article 4, 2021. Mm. So, so they tend to, and we know some of them. We know that if you add compensation to interest, it's taking away all our tax revenue. If you add interest to amortization, it's even worse. It's taking, so we know, we know these things for us. And, and that's where I was going to go to. Since you've been using the family scenario, as a head of the family, and you've been head of our family before, and I'm referring to our economic family. Because your was the head of the family. He was calling the <laughs> okay. shots. You were, managing, <laughs> you, were mani <laughs> you were once managing our pairs, and I'm sure you pretty much know what okay, the figures yeah, look like now. Yeah. Our debt situation, are we not engulfing ourselves? Are we not possibly going to go back to IMF, uh, not IMF, HIPIC? with the trends that we are currently No, if we don't do anything about it. That is, you know, so again, go back, right? What did the 17 programs do for us? It's prevented us from going, you know, the precipice. And everybody, every government might think, oh, no, no, I'm not going to fall. Let me take a little step. Let me take a little step. It rains and it's slippery. <laughs> and if you are not careful, you go. And the worst, yes, in terms of debt, was it? Do you foresee us going there based on all the statistics available? We have 17 experiences. Remember, including the current administration taking ECF. And remember, including, you know, uh, Kufo did a program. Sorry, his excellency Kufo must be catches, you know, did a program. His excellency Rollins did a program. He said, we took Fourth Republic. We've all done it. So I think it's time to just pick the lessons. As what we what are we ones. not getting right? sustaining the reforms because look let me give you an example why mm -hmm. are we not able you know to one last example, why are we not able to to pay down our debt how did we manage to use 550 million u.s dollars of our own oil revenue to pay for the first of the bond 33 or 36 you know by the Muhammad administration and the remaining 200 which we left in the kitty by the current government. Why are we not able, and we continue borrowing, why are we not able to take off? Should we stop borrowing? Company? You are not stopping borrowing. We didn't stop borrowing. We cannot stop borrowing, can we? No, you, can, you have to do planned borrowing. Remember, as you sit here, I don't know, maybe you have a house already. 
But if you don't have it, you are dreaming about the house. And in Ghana, the way you do it, you you buy cement, they do for you. Put it down. <laughs> yeah, small, put it down. Small. Yeah. And then when the shell is finished, then that's where even the small small becomes beautiful. You buy, you know, you target WCs, then you target, you know, first you target tiles, then you target, you know, the, lighting, the ceiling. ceiling yeah. yeah. Because once it is complete, then the small small becomes even more like a relief. But you, you are still intent, right? So if, if we don't sustain, and if you don't sustain that discipline, which is a sacrifice to your family, less food, less holidays, you know, less, you know, whatever, you know, then you would, you would not build a house. We need to go now, but what three things must the executive stop, and I'm referring to expenditure, to fix our problem, at least permanently for now? What three things did we do? And what three things did other governments do? And when I say other governments, remember, the current administration took over this year. Mm -hmm. So it can't be said that they have not tested, you know, IMF program before. They took it out of the ECF. Transparency, right, and candidness. No playing with figures, right, so that we tell Ghanaians the true situation. You know, that's the only way in which they will understand and say, if you want to put a little money aside to repay debt, we are with you. And that's the second one, that is the structural measures which have been recommended for, year, for us over the years. And I'm saying if you take the two last administrations, it was said that we wanted to do homegrown. It was said that in some sectors we were in, a, in a, <laughs> a, 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 the discussions, you know, that I was opposed mm -hmm. to, you mm -hmm. know, to go into the fund. And, uh, yeah, we had we wish one day to be going off but not to be wind off completely, to go there, you know, whilst we become complete, only as and when, like COVID, global crisis and the rest, but not routinely, after six billion US dollars, or injection for COVID, and we are not able to stand on our feet. So the second thing is to sustain those programs, beginning with the PRM measures, right, and be focused on it. And then the third is to strengthen the institutions. I think President Obama told us we need leadership, strong leadership in Africa. But he said, we need most institutions. And not persons. Honorable Yimano said, Takbe, thank you for speaking to us on Face to Face. You're most welcome, and I hope it's useful. It was great. Thank you so much. Uh, he was once Minister of Finance and uh, better informed on the issues having to do with our visit to IMF than many in mm -hmm. this country, because he has a track record of having done that before. My name is Umaru Sanda Amadu. Thank you for being with us and stay with us always.